The gospel never changes, but the church must change constantly. I grew up in the church in the 1950s, and in the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, children and teenagers went to church with their parents. That is no longer true in 2017. In 2017, parents go wherever the child wants to be. If the child wants to be involved in this sport, this event at school, if the child, if the child wants to be involved in it, the parents get them there. And because they are helicopter parents, they hover and watch. Okay? Today, children rule. Children lead. And if you want to reach this community for Jesus Christ, children have to be a major focus of the church. We were working with a small congregation about 20 miles south of the Canadian border up right on the edge of the Adirondacks in New York. The church had been built in the 1800s. They only had 20 people left. The average age was 75. And this church said, will you come in and do this consultation to tell us whether to live or die? The people said, we still would like to live. We said, all right, you've got to focus on children. So what they did, because they had no children at all. So one of the things they did, they went to McDonald's and they said, you have something we want. And they bought it from McDonald's. And now when people people walk into the little foyer which is really nothing more than an extended cloakroom because all they had was that cloakroom the worship center that said about 80 and then a downstairs that's all they had there's a little narrow desk with a big sign on it that says register your child because young people today are not going to give their child to anybody they are very concerned about security register your child so you say you read your child, you got to say a sixth grader or a six year old with you, say, Where's the child go? Say, so You see that big round hole in the wall? It's the slide to the basement. That's what they bought from McDonald's a slide. And the kids disappear down the slide to go to Children's Church. In one year, this church of 20, average age 75, has be became a church of 70 with young families coming, children coming, saw 12 people come to Jesus that year because it's known in the county as the church with the slide. And the kids want to go to the church with the slide, and guess what? The parents get them there. And while the kids are in children's church, the parents hover in the worship service. <coughs> Children's church is one of the most important ministries you have at this church, not only for the children that are here, but to grow the church. Next, all committees will cease to exist by February 1st, 2018. The pastor will put together a staff who will recruit teams to oversee ministry areas for which committees are resp or were responsible. The deacons will still function, but under another name, the chair will be a member of the pastor's staff. The same will be true for the chairperson of the trustees. The primary ministries the pastor will focus on initially are Sunday worship, because that's the, still the front door for many people, children's church, assimilation, helping new people who show up get connected to the church, the bridge events which you're doing out in the community, and outreaches in the community to the particular school. These are the ministries that help the church grow and help you reach unsaved people. The pastor will have the staff set goals for their areas of responsibility. While the goals in each area will be different, all staff members will set evangelism goals, leadership development goals, and growth goals. The pastor, based upon those goals, will set church-wide goals for which he will be held accountable by the session. So the pastor will be held in a much more accountable way than most pastors are, are held, and that's because uh, he's committed to this. The session will be reduced to five people because ministry will be discussed in the staff meeting, so you don't need as large a session. These goals will be in place by September 1, 2018. Number four, facilities. The pastor will lead the church to change the front of the church to redo the lower level entrance, put in a lift that will take wheelchairs and change stairs as needed. Now I know some of this discussion has already been in place, but it's a way to open up the front and to help you be able to contact first time guests much more easily as well. The church will build a cry room for new parents with infants because children are crucial. 
This too will be done by March 1st, 2018. The fellowship hall will be decorated for children and be used for children's church by the time the new children's person is hired. You need a major room in your church that when guests come with kids, it screams, we love kids. It says, we love children. Children's a priority here. Because that people want to see that, that you focus on children. By the way, adults can still use the room. Just because it's decorated for children, you can still use the room. You can, okay. Uh, the fellowship hall, uh, when this person is placed, uh, the Sunday school hour will begin 15 minutes earlier to allow enough time to change the fellowship hall to have it ready for children's church. If the cost of these facilities and the hiring of a pastor and children's person are taken from the reserve funds in 2018, the amount spent will be limited to a maximum of 40% of the total of those reserves at the end of 2017. Now I'm convinced, knowing this church, and what we're going to talk about next, not all of it's going to come out of the reserve funds, but if it were, if that was a worst case scenario, you will still have 60% of what you had in the bank or in your stocks now will still be there. Number five, here's, here's the other piece to this, giving. During the spring of 2018, the pastor will preach two sermons on money and mission. He will preach two more sermons on financial stewardship in the fall of 2018. Also, during the fall of 2018, he will lead the congregation in training on Christian and finances. This will be done during the Sunday school hour, and all the adult classes will come together for training. The pastor will send thank you letters to each donor each quarter, informing them how their gifts have contributed to the advancement of the mission and vision. The letters will also give a glimpse of how the mission and vision will be implemented in the next three months. The first of these letters will be sent by April 30th, 2018. He will also tell 30-second stories each week before the offering, sharing how God has worked that week to accomplish the mission and vision. People give to mission and vi vision. And when people say, hey, this is what our church is doing. So one of our little churches, you learn this, church of about 40, when we, I was working with our churches in California, pastor stood up one Sunday before the offering. So folks, this week we had our first BBS in a decade. We had 12 children in BBS. By the way, three of them accepted Jesus Christ. Thank you for your giving. God is taking your money and turning it into eternal dividends. I can't wait till next year when we have 25 children and 10 of them accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Would the usher please come forward? And week after week after week after week, you all as a congregation need to hear how God is taking your resources and turning them into spiritual dividends. Also, the session will implement new forms of giving, such as direct deposit by January 31st, 2018. Do you realize that in the 1800s, churches only took offerings twice a year? The reason they did that is because most churches were in rural farming communities, and you only had harvests twice a year. But offering envelopes. You have offering envelopes? Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't start until about 1890, 1900. When everybody used to work in a factory and they got paid every Friday in cash in an envelope just about that size. Church did something highly creative. They said, let's take envelopes the same size, we'll create 52 of them and give them to people and hopefully they'll take 10% out of their pay envelope, which was cash, and they'll put it in the offering envelope and bring it to church. Folks, it's no longer 1890. Most people today, particularly younger people, don't get paid in cash. In fact, they don't even know what cash is. Anymore, if I go into a store and give them cash, I've got to show them two forms of ID. <laughs> <laughs> they do it by computer. They do it by direct deposit. It's time to move into the 21st century. And by the way, when people give by direct deposit, they give while they're on vacation. It really helps the church. So just so you know okay, look with me at the last page. Those who regularly attend the congregation will vote to either accept this report and its prescriptions or reject them. By the way, I've come to learn that working with congregations is like herding cats. No one has ever owned a cat. You may have leased it. But cats are going to do what cats want to do. Congregations are going to do what congregations want to do. We never made any of our churches change. God had to change the heart. 
But when people said, folks, we understand that God has not put us here for us, but God has put us here to reach our community. Our old people were willing to change. Our younger people were willing to change. Our empty nesters were willing to change. But this is a choice of any congregation. This vote will occur by December 3rd, 2017. Once this vote is accomplished, the session, as the decision-making authority, will then vote to either accept or reject the report and its prescriptions. This vote will occur by December 10, 2017. If accepted, ECO, your denomination, will provide the church with a congregational coach for a minimum of one year to help implement the prescriptions. This weekend will then continue for a year, and you, your session, your pastor, will be getting resources and help from somebody who has gone through this, knows what is involved, to help you implement these prescriptions. If rejected, the process is over, since the congregation and session will have spoken. Now, this Wednesday night, I'm going to be back, as your pastor said, at 7 o'clock, to see if you have any questions that you want to ask about this. I'm sure you do, and I understand that. And we'll listen to questions, comments, whatever. But there's a couple things, and then we're going to be done. A lot of this involves your pastor. You realize if he comes on part-time and then full-time, he and Maddie and the family are making a major financial sacrifice. By the way, no one has twisted his arm to do that. God may have twisted his heart, but no one has twisted his arm to do that. So Jason, I think it's important that you come up and take, take a few minutes and share with the congregation your response to this report. So it's important you know that we're, um, we're behind this. We're excited about this. Um, I think for the church to grow and do what it's supposed to do, uh, we all have to get involved in that, and uh, we've talked about it um, for six months. So this isn't new for us, it's not something that we were surprised by. Um, and to keep it short, we want to see the church touch people. Uh, it's great to have people here, but we're not really doing what we're called to do. We've been preaching on that for a little while now as a church, and uh, I think it's an opportunity for us. Um, our vision for the church is not to just be the same group for five or six or seven or eight more years, but to be a group that's radically changing because God's moving people's lives and making changes in them. And uh, we're excited to be a part of it. I think it's where we're called to. Um, and I think it's where we need to be uh, to help that do. So I think to keep it short, we're in this 100%. We don't have any questions. Uh, the session came in this morning and said, you know, there's risk. And I said, well, there is if we take God out of the picture. Uh, but I think when we put God in the picture, there really isn't risk. There's just the next thing that God calls you to do. Um, so we're excited. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully uh, you're excited and supported. Uh, Wednesday night's going to be fun, I think, to ask questions and answer them. And uh, There is some challenge. I think you look at this and we look at uh, budgets and all those things. But I would encourage you to look beyond that. To look at the spiritual side of it. Where God's calling us to be. Uh, where God led. Uh, you know, I look at it and I was thinking this morning, you go back and uh, he took Peter, a fisherman, and burned him into um, a builder for the church. Uh, he took Paul, uh, a very well-educated guy, and he put him in prison, and Paul changed the world. Um, you look at uh, John and uh, Matthew, a tax collector. He had the world by the, by the tail, and Jesus one day said, hey, follow me, and he threw down the money and said, okay. Uh, I think we need to make those kind of uh, risks, if you will, if that's the right word, but those kind of challenges. Um, and I'm excited. I've been uh, meeting with Paul now once a month for uh, most of this year. Um, it has been a, it's been fun. It hasn't been easy. Uh, Paul's the first person that's made me sit down and read an entire book every single month and then report on what I learned. And um, that hasn't been fun. Uh, but, but we've done it. And, and we're learning a lot from it and we're encouraged. And I think the other part you need to know is that we're not on this journey alone. There's uh, eight other churches, uh, seven other churches, eight all together in our Western PA group. And we formed a really, really good uh, bond between the churches. And we're all, you know, we're doing this together. Uh, we each have a community that we can make a big impact on, that people can come to know Jesus Christ. And uh, so we've got support from other churches in the area, too. And, and the pastors in the group uh, have really, it's amazing how much we've gotten to know each other better and are supporting each other through this change. So uh, I'm excited. I, I think we've done a lot in 10 years. Um, 
You know, I told the session, I remember the first Sunday here, I walked in, and it was a typical Presbyterian church in the fact that uh, everybody was sitting in the back four pews of the, the sanctuary, and, uh, and they kind of looked at me odd because I don't think you've seen anybody that was in their 20s for a very, very long time. Uh, and I was here, and Maddie uh, came, and we brought our daughter, and um, uh, today... We have this. And so I think it's time for the next step. Um, we're excited about that next step. And we're not looking at this as risk from our family. We're looking at this as, as uh, uh, God's call in our life and the next plan he has for us. So I hope you come along in that. I think the vision painted by Paul this morning is one of hope, uh, one of excitement, and one for us to really meet the obligation of the Great Commission, which is to go make disciples. Uh, and there's nothing more exciting than somebody saying I want to do that too. So uh, we're here. Uh, Maddie's going to talk, I think, a little bit. But uh, we're here. If you have questions, um, we're going to answer on Wednesday night. But after Wednesday night, we'll be open for that. You know where I'm at. You know my number. Um, <coughs> we're excited. There's nothing I would love more than be able to get up in the morning and come do Jesus' work um, all day long. So I think it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. And uh, we're looking forward to the journey and the excitement that goes with this. Okay. Maddie, you stand down there. Okay. Uh, move up just so you're the elders can move behind. I'm going to ask the session if you would come up and stand behind your pastor. Uh, uh, Jason and Maddie saw this report on Friday night. The session saw it yesterday. And today when I met with the session just before the service, you need to know that they are in favor of what's in the report. So as you look at the leadership that God has placed now on your congregation, they are in agreement that this is the way they think the church needs to go. That, that, that doesn't mean uh, they also want to hear from you, and that's why we're going to have the uh, town meeting on Wednesday night. That's also why there's a vote. But you need to know that your leaders believe this is what God is asking the church to do. So I'm going to ask you if you would lay your hands on Maddie and Jason, session members. Would you all stand, please? We're going to pull this over and close. I'm going to close in prayer. And if you want to show your identity with your leaders and with your pastor while I'm praying, would you just hold your hands out this way as I pray? Let's do that. Our gracious God, I want to thank you today for the women and men who are in this congregation, for the many who are here because they have a deep commitment for Jesus Christ, for the way they have been open already to some change, for the way it's been impacted in terms of how they worship, how they communicate with each other, how they've been willing to be involved, whether it's at the fair or the slip and slide or whatever it is. I'm grateful to, as you know, to work with a church where there are people who, who are beginning to say, yeah, it's not about us, but it's about the people in this community. I want to thank you for the session, for their openness to your will, to understand that these people who stand here today, some of them longtime members here at the church, but understand that change needs to come and they need to get even more, become more effective in fulfilling your great commission and are open to whatever that takes. I want to thank you for Jason and Maddie and for their family and for uh, what they have brought to this congregation over 10 years, of how much has been accomplished by someone who's only part-time, who works hard, who is dedicated, who is open, who is honest, who talks to people and listens. I just thank you for his leadership. And I just ask our God that you might use this weekend and this whole process to have this congregation five years from now to be known in this community as a congregation that takes risks for the kingdom of God, for the Great Commission, who are far more concerned about the people who aren't in church on Sunday than the people who are, even though hopefully the people in the church will be cared for well. May the primary care Go to those who Jesus came to seek and to save, the lost. And may this church reflect the character and the mission of Jesus Christ. For your glory I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed.